Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Orphan Last, aka Skylar Madison, and welcome to the Two Years in Retrospect. This is a video series where I release only one video every single year and just basically kind of talk about the history of my channel, kind of reviewing things, kind of talking about the identity that I've kind of formed over the years and months, and kind of sharing that with you, as well as sometimes making announcements, I feel. So let's go ahead and go into the videos section of my channel. So I'm going to look at uh, some of the oldest ones first and then progress on from there. Uh, so from what you can see here, the very first video that I posted was me introducing myself with OpenTunes. So OpenTunes was immediately part of the identity of my channel. You can see that I immediately jumped into providing some tutorials and I wanted to provide something that I didn't really see going on inside of the community around OpenTunes. I wanted to provide some half decent artwork. There, there was a lot of tutorials at the time. Uh, they still exist, but there were a lot more tutorials at that time where you'd look at the thumbnail, you'd look at the artwork inside of the video, and it'd get you to kind of question, am I even going to learn anything from this? I wanted to completely offer a little bit of a reassurance that if you watch my video, you're going to learn something. I then progressed into talking about uh, perspective, teaching how to do it, specifically curvilinear perspective, how to draw panoramic images and such like that. This is something that I feel is really cool and even pretty useful to somebody who's doing 2D animation or just generally anyone who's creative. This is uh, something that I find the most interesting uh, from last year. Uh, Basic Anatomy. This is what got me the idea of the Teach Me to Draw series. This is the wrong name for this video. I shouldn't have even said that it was about anatomy because I didn't even talk about anatomy. But it got quite a bit of views, as you can see. So I'm really happy about that. I then went ahead and got into talking about the new release of Open Tunes. The o Open Tunes is Here series is pretty good, which was kind of technically the first news story on my channel. Uh, last year, I also went ahead and designed my mascot. Ultimately, the original design I wound up not really even using because once you see some of these thumbnails, some of them look pretty freaking weird. I started to kind of steer away from using the mascot pretty early on. And I quickly just realized that, you know, I, I just need to hone down this mascot character in order for me to actually get him to work. Not only that, but I was drawing on an image that had the exact same resolution as a thumbnail. Now that's actually a really big problem. Uh, you're not going to be able to see any fine details or anything like that uh, on a thumbnail because it gets shrunk down so small. But the thing is, is if you're drawing on a much larger canvas with a higher resolution and then you go ahead and shrink that down, it does look better. And so that was what I eventually realized in order to kind of get into using my mascot, which I've started to use a lot more. Last year, I also introduced What I Do for a Living. Another video in the What I Do for a Living series is uh, coming on its way. I have a little bit of footage there. I did a collaboration with Noble Frugal Studio, which was pretty cool. I think the greatest thing that came out of this series is that Adam Earl, who's a professional animator, I've mentioned him several times, and he's actually the guy who gave me the reason for uh, making the better way to animate the camera. Anyways, he uh, saw the final image and went ahead and shared one of the last videos in that series uh, with a bunch of professional animators, co-workers, things like that on social media. And so that, you know, that's kind of heartwarming and uh, that's the greatest thing that came out of this collaboration. Uh, Noble Frugal has gone ahead and provided at least one video about this, so I, you know, I'm happy with how this collaboration has ultimately turned out. Granted, I spent a lot of time on it, and you know, there's only one video about it, but ultimately, I, I keep thinking about it, and it's, it's open tunes, and his audience is pretty much the exact same audience that I have, so I'm not too torn up about it. I started this collaboration with Blender Beetle, but she immediately got into doing some schoolwork and got way too busy to do YouTube. Her release schedule is completely erratic right now. And you know what? That's fine. You know, if she's needing to educate herself, I'm happy with that. So, but there are a few failed projects on my channel, and I'm going to be kind of discussing a few of those. You can see that I started the 51 animation challenges last year as well, which started out pretty strong, and it's kind of like a artistic journey series. It's like a journal for me, and I'm sharing at least what I'm learning, what I'm thinking about while I'm doing it, 
and the tools that I'm using, uh, different types of strategies, uh, little obstacles that wind up being in my path and different approaches that I take towards overcoming those obstacles. Uh, even though the most popular video on my channel is the exporting into MP4, that is the most popular video, but this is the most relevant to me. Uh, OpenTunes 1.2.0 is here and how to optimize it. This video is still relevant for the most recent update of OpenTunes. And if you want your interface to look like my interface whenever you see my videos, this is the video that you need to watch in order to get it to do that. 28 videos later, I finished the Noble Frugal Studio collaboration. Uh, it took me six months and I wound up with this really nice background. I'm really happy with how that turned out. I think the second most relevant video on my channel right now is the OpenTunes workflow overview video. Now, I don't really consider it to be a tutorial, but a description of what tasks you can expect to go through in order to wind up with the final image. I'm trying to, with my current 51 animation challenge, uh, the character expression change challenge, I'm trying to kind of step away from that a little bit a little bit away from that workflow specifically, but it's getting me to be a little bit frustrated with open tunes since I'm changing up the workflow. Ultimately, even though it's convoluted and such like that, this video is pretty relevant. Uh, it's It's got a decent way of describing how to color your animation and all that. I've really become the guy who reports the news on my channel. It's not my favorite video t series to work on. It's tedious and frustrating, but it comes with a few perks, you know? It, there, I mean, there could be worse things in the world than having a bunch of developers that use the software that you are using and promoting and having them listen to different opinions and thoughts and feature requests that you happen to have and you know what I have to lend out a big thank you to the developers for actually giving me the time of day and taking me seriously so that's top-notch you guys are awesome about eight months ago I was getting really close to getting 1,000 subscribers and I was making these t-shirt designs and I was talking about making a patreon but there was a few things that got in my way one of the things that got in my way was I found the perfect place that had direct garment printing on demand shipping and all that done and it didn't require that you pay for some sort of limited time campaign. I, I see videos where people say things like, oh, this is the last day that you'll be able to get this t-shirt. And if I'm going to make a t-shirt, I only want to deal with it once. I want to make it, I want to post it, and, you know, make money off of it forever if I can. And so I thought I found the best place possible, and then I go to create an account, and Orphan Last is already taken. Who the heck thinks about pairing together those two words? I mean, it doesn't make sense to me. Why would anyone use that username? I mean, it's... I've never ran into that situation ever before. And so, if I can't have it so that when people type in Orphan Last or Orphan Last t-shirts in Google or something like that, I can't have it be a different name. Uh, than Orphan Last. I, I have to have it be Orphan Last. It's, it's frustrating. I know that I'm not really articulating myself very well, but I know that you guys understand what I'm saying. I have to have the Orphan Last name. That is my, you, that is my brand. So that was a big stumbling block. Some of it is also fear. The fear of designing t-shirts and having them not sell. Also creating a Patreon. It, it's something that I've never done before. It terrifies me to some extent and I don't really know why. It's just... It's just fear of the unknown, you know? But also, really soon after that, I read an article uh, written by a fairly successful YouTuber, and he said that he didn't make any money within the first two years of him being on YouTube. And that told his audience that he loved what he did on YouTube so much that he was willing to do it for free. And clearly, I, may, I, I love what I'm doing so much that I'm willing to do it for free, but, you know... There is a reason why I'm on YouTube. Eventually, I do plan on making money. Uh, it's not because I'm a money-grabbing bastard. It's because I 
fractured my spine and broke every major bone in my body uh, back in 2008 and my body has a shelf life and I can't be doing construction work forever so eventually I do need to make YouTube my career and I do think that's actually possible a lot of people they hear statements like that and they laugh they think it's just you're stupid and yeah you know occasionally I do say that in my personal life and yeah I get treated like an idiot but you know once I once I show them social blade and uh, type in orphan last let's see orphan last I uh, go ahead and go into future projections okay now it's slow growth but take a look at this 2021 March 30th 2021 okay now social blade is not like a hundred percent accurate but you know that it, it does say future projections that social blade created using a regression formula the estimated results have an error rate of 5.72 percent and 7.48 percent okay i can live with a 10 percent of variance of accuracy on social blade and they've been able to nail it down from from pretty much six to pretty much eight percent inaccuracy overall social blade is a really good tool and i do believe that i can continue doing what i'm doing even though i still love it and everything with my full-time job i believe within 2021 I, I could I, I can do it I started the subscriber drawing request seven months ago I really like this series it's really fun to do but the problem is that I think I'm gonna have to change some of my policies that I have I mean like there's no way I'm going to be drawing a bunch of copywritten material because I want to eventually make something like a coloring book or something with my artwork and have you guys be able to you know purchase something like that and take advantage of it and if it's a copywritten character I'm not going to be able to do that for you guys and so uh, yeah copywritten characters would not be allowed if I resume this series later on in the future which I do plan on doing continuing this series I do plan on continuing it but I, I wasn't getting enough requests so every time that I'd be up for requests I, I would get so few that I would have to pull some of the requests from the previous time people were requesting a drawing and then get a people to vote on it. That poll only got a few people voting on it and so I feel like okay if only a minority of the audience is voting then this isn't really working. So I decided to kind of abandon the uh, subscriber drawing request series. I came out with a really good image with the uh, warrior mouse color is something that I struggle with and all that uh, so the teach me to draw series this is uh, quickly becoming the most successful uh, video series on my channel right now it gets a, a, d a decent amount of watch time it gets a decent amount of views and so I'm, I'm really happy with this series so far uh, I think that there are some people that are giving me some uh, uh, constructive criticism that don't really understand how to draw in the first place and so they accept expect me to tell them this is where this line goes and then I draw out a line and then they go back to their piece of paper and they draw that line exactly the way that I drew it and then I go okay and then this next line goes right here and it goes like this and then they go back to their paper and they do the exact same thing that's not how you learn how to draw you're not going to learn anything from that method okay so if I'm teaching how to draw in a specific way there's a reason I think one of the most underrated videos on my channel or video series the animating a coin flip it's uh, animating a coin flip fabricating the, the sound of thunder remastering fabricated thunder with audacity animating lightning and animating electricity and a light reflection this is an excellent series uh, I feel like I, I start an animation I go ahead and I fabricate the sound of thunder like you have to be the sound guy in order to be an animator in a lot of cases and I, I really feel as though this is kind of an underrated series uh, the first video got a lot of views 358 but then it kind of started to dwindle with 193 
135. And then the second to the last one, Animating Lightning, 309 views. And then Animating Electricity, 283. So the best performing videos in this series was the first and the last two, which is really unfortunate. I know that it's weird watching some guy pounding on a piece of metal in order to fabricate the sound of thunder, but it's interesting to me. I don't know. I would kill to watch footage like that. That's awesome. Not literally. I wouldn't literally kill to watch that, just in case some people are worried about that. Anyways, the Animation Studies series, okay? So far, there's only one video about this, but I consider it a series. This is a very well-performing video series. The 621 views, good minutes watched. I plan on resuming this series. William Wimhurst, he has a series kind of similar to this, but there are a few occasions where I get exactly what he's talking about uh, with what he's observing from the animation. At other times, I feel like uh, I'm completely missing what he's trying to describe. And so I feel as though my presentation style for this series is is really good and high quality and it also takes a lot of production time so uh, stay tuned I plan on having there be another one of these videos possibly maybe two or three of these a year hopefully uh, we'll see how that works out uh, the draconian rain collaboration draconian rain is an excellent artist and there's going to be a lot of her on my channel in the future I guarantee it this is the this is definitely an underrated uh, a series of videos on my channel right here. This is a collaboration that worked out perfectly, but neither one of us really benefited from it, unfortunately. I, I really don't know why. If you guys haven't checked out her channel, just do it. There's going to be a card up at, at the upper right corner. Just take a look at her channel. You're going to see her on my channel a lot more in the future, just simply because she is that helpful that interesting and I, I am willing to promote somebody who is an actual human being. About one month ago I started to use my mascot a lot more and you can actually see a little bit of an evolution of uh, the proportions over time. Uh, initially uh, at the start I was giving him realistic uh, proportions and it really wasn't working out. I tried one thumbnail originally where he had cartoony-ish uh, proportions but it just looked wrong it, like every time I used him he looked idiotic I nixed the uh, glasses that he wears just simply because they don't register very well in every single pose on a tiny thumbnail and so I decided to just bring him to life a little bit differently gave him more saturated colors something more lively I, I gave him a brown shirt at one point but that wasn't really that appealing and I feel like I, I've started to nail down his uh, proportions a little bit better. Uh, I think it's going to be about two and a half heads long. So his head is going to be a little bit smaller than, uh, say, someone like Draw with Jazza. I, I, I like cartoony looking characters. It's just there's only so much cartoony nature that I can really tolerate in my own artwork. Uh, I, I started to make it a little bit of a staple where I started to give him a green shirt. I don't know why. I don't look good in green. I like blue, but he's got blue pants, so I gave him a green shirt. It was just kind of like a random decision. But then I drew him wearing a suit and tie, and I've mentioned this briefly instead of the Noble Frugal Studio collaboration series. I mentioned that I was raised as a Mormon, uh, uh, somebody who was inside of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I was raised as a worthy Mormon, a very staunch religious family. And I wound up leaving Mormonism primarily because I felt like I was the only worthy Mormon in the church. Now, a lot of people s tend to scoff at that statement, but uh, they, uh, they set the bar pretty stinking high. And the difference from a worthy member and a non-worthy member is pretty easy to identify. But anyways, I grew up not really thinking that hip-hop artists were cool and, and and looking at what they were wearing and thinking oh yeah that's cool I didn't I, that was never something that I really entered into my mind it was a suit and tie that's cool to me it's always been cool it's respectable it's praiseworthy and so once I drew him in a suit and tie it just that made sense that's my mascot right there and so I plan on primarily having him in a suit and tie uh, I do plan on having him wear different outfits in the future, but by and large, 
the suit and tie. It really does distinguish him as being distinctly different from, uh, say, anybody else's mascot, I feel, and all that good stuff. So if we go into my last year in retrospect video and just kind of skip towards the end here, and if I go ahead and pull out my calculator, I'm going to go ahead and do something really quickly here. Towards the end of last year, I got 638 subscribers around this time of the year. And so if I go into my channel currently, I now have 1,300 subscribers. Holy crap. You know, you, you compare that to, to somebody who's been on YouTube for years and years and years, having like 5 million subscribers or something, and that, the, the 1,300 is nothing, but how many people have 1,300 people following their artwork? And here's the thing, here's the thing, it's like two subscribers a day. All it takes is two years, two subscribers a day, and you can reach this. Here, let me prove it to you, it's 365 days of the year right? Let's multiply that by two years, okay? And then let's multiply that by two subscribers a day. 1,460. Pretty much two subscribers a day. Pretty much. If you get two subscribers a day, that's all you have to do in order to get this many. Just get on YouTube and just keep doing it. So we got 1,300 subscribers. Uh, and then last year I had how many? Uh, 638 subscribers. Subtract 638 subscribers. Okay, this year I've gotten 662 subscribers. So if I were to s subtract 638 once again, I've gotten 24 subscribers more than I did last year. That's not very much, but it's something. I'm happy with that, okay? So clearly there's something that I need to be doing better with my channel, but I can't be having this eat me alive. I, I hope the best for the future. I do expect that there will be some big changes on my channels, exciting things going on on my channel. I don't really see any point to announce it, to be honest, but overall, for the next year, I do think I'm going to be introducing a different philosophy. And I think I'm going to be introducing that new philosophy inside of next year's channel trailer. You know, this video right here, I'm going to be replacing it uh, with something else. I do plan on doing a few of the things that I was doing last year and that I said that I was thinking about doing. Uh, for example, I am thinking about changing my logo just a little bit, just a slight adjustment. And some of the reason is because I need to redo the logo inside of Affinity Designer. When I did it this year in 2008, the majority of the work on open tunes which was really convoluted and frustrating but it rendered the best results because i could change the colors of objects really easily because of the vector tools and i got a high quality image out of it so i'm happy but i, I would really like to have that inside of an actual vector program so that's something that you guys have to look forward to as for the uh, channel intro series i'm thinking i'm going to be doing something different with this background to be honest uh, I was initially thinking about having it be a channel intro and such like that, but I'm kind of unhappy with this series. Uh, but I do plan on using this background, uh, possibly in a different project. And the primary reason is because uh, as a video intro, it has too much in common with the Draw With Jazza intro. Uh, it has Draw With Jazza's channel intro shows his mascot running from left to right, jumps through a bunch of paint and, you know, does some sort of peace sign or something. Whereas this has my mascot running right through a pair of double doors and runs past the camera and then jumps through a window. I mean, where have we heard this before? I, at the time when I was making it, it just seemed like, oh yeah, it could be no other way. Uh, I have a tendency of just being inspired by something and not realizing that I am just totally ripping something off. Uh, at least that's what it feels like to me. Of course, you know, this video intro would actually have a background, whereas Draw With Jazz's doesn't, and it would be kind of telling a story. But overall, I was kind of depressed when I was making this video series. If you actually watch it, I am not entirely sober throughout the entire thing. And, and it's totally obvious. I, I was genuinely depressed, and 
All I could think of was depressing things, and the story I was thinking of telling was pretty depressing. And the, the thought of working on this totally depressing video series story year in and year out and have it be really super depressing, I just, yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm sorry. I'm, I just can't do that. Uh, maybe something kind of like that in the future maybe but not depressing but it's been a, a an interesting year there has been growth and march of 2021 i'm looking forward to that hopefully social blade is correct Anyways, guys, that pretty much concludes it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you guys would like to get more notifications from me, feel free to click on the bell. And if you guys would like to see any more of my content, feel free to click on anything that you see appearing on the screen right now. Thank you very much for your time.